Hello, this is Father Andy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Saturday of the third week of Lent. And uh, today is the last day for our panoramic journey through the Synoptic Gospels. Uh, as you know, for the last three and a half weeks, we've been introduced to scriptures through Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, we've gotten, a, 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 like I said, a panorama of all of the various teachings and demonstrations of our Lord that help us to understand who he is and what he's calling us to be. So today's the last day of that. And then on Monday, we're going to begin our journey through John. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes of my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance, and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, obviously, when Jesus was addressing this parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, he was doing it to a group of tax collectors that uh, were present there as he was sharing with them. Just prior to this, he had the uh, parable of the persistent widow who was, again, uh, praying and asking her neighbor for some help. And it was, again, a principle of being persistent in prayer. But Jesus also is wanting them to understand that one of the purposes of prayer is not to brag about yourself, but to humble yourself under the, the hand of Almighty God, that you may honestly and forthrightly show him who you really are, that he might <clears throat> um, give you the grace uh, to go ahead and continue living life. And anyway, the, uh, the parable that Jesus uses puts together an extreme situation. You have a Pharisee who is one of the leaders of the Jews, and the Pharisees are extremely vigilant concerning feasts and fasts and doing everything external to make sure that their lives uh, I, I align completely with the teachings of the law. Now, however their hearts may be inclined, and that's one of the things that Jesus did throughout his ministry, is he called them to account that they may look nice on the outside, but their, their inside isn't the same, that their insides are corrupted. And, uh, you know, one of the places he says they're like whitewashed tombs. They're all dressed up on the outside, but on the inside they're dead. And so... Again, he talks about this Pharisee who spoke this prayer to himself. It wasn't even Jesus saying that he wasn't even praying to God. He was just proud of himself in front of God. And so he, he just listed the characteristics, those good things that he did in his life. And uh, uh, that, was, that was his prayer. Was, it really wasn't a prayer. It was just a bragging session before the Lord on all the externals. That, that he did, that conformed to the law, but yet it betrayed the fact that his heart was empty. There wasn't a lot going on on the inside. Well, you've got the Pharisee. He is one of the prominent figures in the whole of uh, Jewish culture as far as uh, religious life. Now you've got the tax collector. The tax collector is on the other end. He is seen as despicable evil and hated by the Jews because he took advantage of his people. Uh, the tax collectors are Jews who were hired by the Romans to extract taxes from their countrymen 
and give the taxes to the Romans. Now, not only would they be seen as those that were taxing the, the, uh, the Jews, but as Jews, they were also taking additional money to live on. So they were basically uh, robbing their uh, brothers and sisters uh, in order to make more money. So the tax collectors were hated. And so you here you have two people who have gone up to the temple to pray. Obviously, the Pharisee believes that he's in the right place, that this is where he belongs. He belongs at the temple because he does all these things right. And now you have a tax collector who really is out of place. The temple is not a normal location for the tax collectors to be found. They've basically uh, given up on their faith because they are hated by the Jews. They believe they're hated by God. And that's why, again, Matthew's conversion and his invitation from Jesus to follow him is such a powerful indication of our Lord's desire to meet people where they are and to raise them up to new life. And that's exactly where this tax collector is. The tax collector stays at a distance. He does not even feel worthy to come close to where the Pharisee would be in the temple area. Now, he was with an eye shot because the Pharisee referred to him in his prayers as, I'm glad that I'm not like this tax collector. The tax collector doesn't even look up. He has, he, he has such a low opinion of himself that he doesn't believe that he should in any way, shape, or form uh, have his eyes look upward toward God. He is in a state not just of humility. He's in a state of humiliation. He's humiliated by, by the reality of what he has done. Somehow he has come to conviction in terms of his lifestyle and the things that he's been about. And so he, he's at the temple. He wants to meet God. He won't even look up. Uh, you can even see this in the eyes of some people when you meet them and they're not feeling good about where they are in life and they won't even look at you. And that's the way the, this uh, tax collector was. And he beat his breast. He was uh, just lamenting his life and what he had done. And as he was beating his breast, as he stood in this humiliated state, he prayed. And I think that's the beautiful thing is the first one, the Pharisee, he, uh, Jesus said, prayed to himself. The, the uh, tax collector prayed and addressed God directly. And just again, giving an, uh, an account of who he was. It wasn't that he could say, you know, I did all of these things. I have all this money. I have such a wonderful lifestyle. No, he honestly said who he was on the inside. It had nothing to do with, with his exterior. He probably was dressed just as well as the Pharisee because he had a lot of money. He extracted that money from his countrymen. But he stood off, his eyes lowered, he beat his breast, and he simply prayed, Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That prayer can't get any more humble than that. Be merciful to me, a sinner. I am not asking you to give anything to me on the basis of who I am. I am asking for you to give me mercy on the basis of who you are. And I think that is such a key for us to see here, is that Jesus is again uh, emphasizing the fact that as we come to the Lord in whatever state we find ourselves, we don't have to get fixed up, dressed up, and made up in order to go to God. We just need to go to him honestly as we are, knowing that in whatever condition we find ourselves, as we come to him humbly, he receives us there. He will act in mercy. In fact, that's what Jesus said. He said, I tell you, 
the latter went home justified. The latter went home with mercy because he was honest before God. Again, during Lent, one of the beautiful things we constantly invite you to do is to go to confession. When you go to confession, you know, the greatest thing you can do is simply go and say, God, have mercy to me. I am a sinner. Here are my sins. Knowing that God is merciful, he will forgive you of your sins and give you grace to move on in your life in a way that can be pleasing and glorifying to him and much better for you. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, tomorrow is Laetare Sunday. It is Rejoice Sunday. And so in the midst of our Lenten penance and abstinence, almsgiving, fasting, and all of those things, we take a Sunday and remind ourselves that in the midst of all that we are examining ourselves to be, like this uh, uh, tax collector, be merciful to me, a sinner. We can also say, be merciful to me, a sinner, and I rejoice knowing of your love. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.